back to Brashonomics. So, you know, throughout the holidays, it's nice to know that even the big banks, or at least the people who run them, have hearts without evicting people. You know, a lot of people have houses that they do want to stay in and uh, want to make sure that it's healthy for them. Paul Cokerhook joins us, owner of Pathway Design and Construction, who is an American Lung Association master home environmentalist, and his company, Pathway Design and Construction, focuses on environmentally friendly building. Paul, how are you, my friend? I'm great. Happy to be here today. I'm, I'm happy to have you. You guys staying uh, staying busy throughout the winter? I know you know we chatted a little bit about uh, you know planning way ahead for for spring projects recently. But uh, how does that help? What does that do for you guys in the construction business here in the winter? Yeah, in the winter it slows down unless you have projects that can carry you through. Um, especially the holiday time, it gets a little bit slow. People don't want you remodeling their living room and kitchen while they have people they, over. They have plans, they right? Have plans. Oh, those plans. <laughs> those pesky plans. Uh, Paul. Okay. Well, you know there is some. Um, Things that people are sensitive to as they build a house that maybe they don't even know about. Uh, and one of these is this multiple chemical sensitivity. What does that mean? Sure. It doesn't. Um, <clears throat> I got a cold today, Ben. Oh, you and did. So right, well, I'm going to clear my throat a little bit. That's all right. If you could just try to clear your throat <laughs> away, away from, from the, the microphone, microphone uh, that would be awesome. All right. <laughs> uh, so. On a very basic level, multiple chemical sensitivity is uh, what's happened to uh, some people over the course of time is they've been exposed to chemicals, um, it, whether that be in the workplace, in their home, uh, or just in general growing up, um, the environment that they were growing up. Uh, some people who say are from Texas, um, they grew up next to oil fields and they were exposed to um, off-gassings and burning of the, the fuels um, there. So they have, what, what happens with our, with our bodies is we, we can absorb like so many chemicals, but there comes a time where we hit a threshold and each one of us is different in how we absorb those, those chemicals. Some of us can handle more, some of us can handle less. And a lot of that depends on the exposure that we've had throughout our lifetime. Um, so is it almost like building up a tolerance? It's yeah, it, it, essentially. But then you, once you basically fill your cup, it starts overflowing, and then you start having problems with the with your body. Um, and what what we see with some of our some of the people that we end up dealing with is you know they'll they wake up and they have um, swollen eyes, they they have trouble breathing. Um, they have uh, allergic reactions to people who just have uh, deodorant on. Um, so, <laughs> which would be every. <laughs> yeah, I can only imagine that would be like what ninety nine percent for a of lot people. of these people. It's 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 horrible. Yeah, it really it really is. Um, they can't they can't go to the mall um, because they for fear of walking by a perfume counter. Um, so it really it really does affect uh, their lifestyle. Is it common? It, it's becoming more and more common. Uh, because of what we've been, what we're exposing ourselves to um, in our homes. Again, we, we've talked about this so many times. Our homes get tighter, um, and we're putting in, you know, furniture. Um, we're wearing more perfumes, um, or if it's not us as a guy, it's our wives. Or um, I don't know. You smell pretty good, Paul. Wait. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. <laughs> um, so essentially, it it it's it's becoming more common. Um, sure. I think that was the question. Well, no, I mean, I think, it, well, it, it would seem like from what you're saying is you, the more exposure you have to chemicals, the faster your cup fills up, your, basically what your body can handle starts to overflow. And the reality is there's more chemicals everywhere to ex get exposed to. That's right. That's right. Um, we, weird example. We have uh, one client that we dealt with a few years ago. She can't sit in her backyard when her neighbors are doing their laundry because they put a dryer sheet in their dryer and the dryer sheet the uh, perfumes on the dryer sheet affect her. So she has to go into her house and lock herself in her house. So on a beautiful day, and her, if her neighbor's doing the laundry, she can't sit out in the backyard. Has she ever told her neighbor? I, th I think she has, but they're, they like, you know, the, the idea with the dryer sheet is no static cling. Sure. Right? So <laughs> I'm sorry you can't breathe, but I am not wearing static -y clothes. <laughs> That's right. And, you know, I'm trying to make somebody understand that who doesn't sure. fully understand what's happening sure. is, is difficult. Yeah, I understand. I get that. That is, you know, that is a difficult thing. I mean, because I don't know how many people know about multiple chemical sensitivity. So the fact that people don't know about it, it makes it a little bit tougher to tell some, you know, hey, I have this. 
help me out. Yeah, and I think Don't one of the, do your laundry. Under I, your I think unfortunately for the people that are suffering from this, one of the the hardest things is for them to try to explain to other people because it's like you kind of they they get some some people there's this misnomer that uh, they're just kind of they're kind of kooky, but that's not the case for for a majority of these people. They're they really are sick, well, and, I, they, I, and they can't. Sure. They can't. Ha- they can't help it. Well, it. It seems like that would be very challenging. You know, I mean, as you said, a lot of people don't even understand what it is. Their neighbors probably don't, and it may be even difficult to actually get results for these people because, as you said, it's not even in your control. I mean, you know, you're helping them build a house, but that doesn't stop their neighbor from doing their laundry. That doesn't keep them from being able to maybe walk by a perfume counter, maybe go to the gas station. I mean, I don't know any of these things that maybe could contribute to this. Right. And I think that's one of the biggest, that's one of the cha- most challenging things that we have to deal with as a contractor for somebody who's coming to us and saying, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of doing these things. Or my home is sick. Is there a way for you to help me? Um, we have to start looking at basically everything. Um, you, you had mentioned a gas station close by, and that's, that's a, that, can be a big, that can be a big thing for somebody. And um, so really trying to, for us to go in and really start looking at their home and looking for, you know, do they have some sort of uh, a chemical that's that's in their house that they didn't know was in there, um, you know, an old an old bottle of something that might be I mean, might be sink, deteriorating. Don't or, know. Yeah, and so, you know, we really if if a homeowner were to come to us and say, okay, um, this is you know kind of what we're doing, we really have to start on a on a basic level um, and start looking at basically everything in the house, um, whether that be uh, water intrusion, um, in particular, you know, we, there's quite a few uh, people that we deal with that have some sort of a mold um, allergy or some sort of uh, reaction to mold. Paul Kolkerhook joins us, owner of Pathway Design and Construction, uh, really focusing on environmentally friendly building. Uh, we're talking about multiple chemical sensitivity, including things that are in your home. So what do you do? I mean, if, once you, I guess, identify the problem, the thing, the the, the chemical, really, that somebody's being sensitive to, it, it, do you start to construct a plan based on the knowledge you have in order to alleviate the symptoms? Yeah. It, the hardest thing is really trying to find, I guess, because it's usually it's not one thing. It's, again, it's multiple chemical sensitivity, so it's, it's multiple things, and they all kind of um, build upon each other, So it's one big bucket, as we talked about earlier. Yeah. It's, um, you know, whether it, I, we've had homeowners, uh, blue tape, everybody's familiar with blue tape. Um, and we've had homeowners who it, it gives off a, a smell and part of dust protection is a huge part of what we do. And if we pull out the blue tape and this homeowner has a reaction to blue tape, it could be a week or two before they're actually better. And, wow. and we can, it, so it's, it's insane. It, it really is trying to trying to work with all these things. But these are things that we've learned um, over the course of time. And so you guys bring kind of this experience. So like let's say somebody isn't feeling well in their own home. Now you guys are starting to be able to take your experience of what maybe is bothering them and now really be able to, I guess, kind of make a life altering difference in somebody's life because you're helping there. You, you mentioned a home being sick, uh, which I guess is really code for what saying the house has an issue and it's making me sick yeah yeah and it, it, you know we can it's not even it's not even not even code i suppose it really just that means that it's <laughs> wasn't <laughs> we're, we're tapping back it's and forth or anything but um you know, so i guess you guys are able to do that and what i mean is that really the biggest reason you guys have the opportunity to really make these big changes i, I don't know how would you find all these things whether it's blue tape or Dryer sheets. I mean, it must be a laundry list of stuff. No pun intended. (laughs) We again, we basically just start at the very bottom and start. You start removing things and seeing how how it makes the homeowner feel. Um, And as far as like choosing materials, uh, doing testing with the homeowner to see if they have reactions. So give them a little bit of of something and um, having them do smell tests. and see if they have have reactions to the uh, products that that are in the basically in the sealed jar. And and is it hard for somebody? I mean, I guess it, it would be hard for somebody to even know what the issue. I mean, what it may be. 
It is. And, you know, for some, some homeowners, some homeowners that we deal with, um, they've had testing done. So they've gone to the doctor and they've had tests and they say, okay, I know that I have a reaction to formaldehyde. And formaldehyde is in so many products that we use in the build, in the, in the building industry. Um, even in, I mean, formaldehydes and stuff that we buy at the store, whether it be Home Depot or Safeway or whatever. Um, we just, what is formaldehyde? It's it's used as a binder. Um, it's I like a glue. It's like yeah, it's used as a as a glue. It's I don't know the exact definition of sure, what formaldehyde just, I've is, heard but formaldehyde what it is, it's, it's added it it's was. added to product to create um, to help it tackiness, stickiness. Yeah, I see you doing this with your fingers. You know, say, the, wait. the stickiness <laughs> thing. I'm just not sure other people can see it when you know you're on the radio and everything. Uh, Paul Coker joins us, owner with Pathway Design and Construction. Paul, we just have about a minute and a half left before we do have to go to break. Uh, but you know. This is, it almost sounds like a doctor type of gig, and you take it from a construction piece. How did that happen? Um, you know, I originally went to college thinking, oh, gosh, it would be great to be a doctor, right? They make they make good money. and um, But as I kind of got into the classes, I didn't, they didn't work real well for me. <laughs> <laughs> but this, this really allows me, as, as I've started to understand more and more what we're doing, um, it it allows me that avenue of um, um, uh, exploration, I guess, to kind of tap into that that side that I, I find I do find interesting. Whether the classes agreed with me or not, um, I find it interesting that how we can really make a difference in somebody's life. Well, what what sounds pretty, really cool to me is that you know you take maybe a a, a doctor's perspective on it of of what's making people sick, and a lot of people think you know I mean there's things that you take pills for Western medicine. There's things like acupuncture. There's things like eating, right? There's things like working out. And, of course, you're kind of taking another aspect of it. It's also about the place you live. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's a, that's a great way of putting it, Ben. Um, it's really essentially you, the idea is not to um, mask a symptom, try to treat a symptom. It's to try to treat a disease. Yeah. Essentially. Well, Paul, thanks so much for joining us. We do have to go to break. Uh, you know, it always is interesting to find out. The reasons people maybe don't feel as well as they do, and uh, man, it could be your house. We'll be right back after this break. 